he's dead. Right. Period. <laughs> and there is more story to tell. That there's more story to tell is about to bust their heads. The people watching that, they're gonna be like, what? Hey, yo, come on, we gotta move this way. Kane is gonna be looking for us. So he's gonna introduce us to Breeze. Hi, I'm ready. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay as we approach the 10-year anniversary of Power, it really is incredible to witness the enormous connection our fans have with the Power universe. We can't wait to see how Origins will further evolve this dynamic franchise while bringing fresh, gripping, and expansive storytelling to our audience. That was Catherine Busby speaking to Deadline teasing the Power spin-offs along with 50's posts on social media, which has pretty much sent the internet in frenzy because Power fans are about to get what they've been asking for. A young James St. Patrick and Tommy are finally being introduced in their own spin-off show called Power Origins. And I say James, not Ghost, because there is an important detail from Power that we do need to consider, around how James got his nickname of Ghost, which I will run through in this breakdown. So in this video, we're going to be running through every single clue, detail and questions that we have from the introduction of young James and Tommy, what it could mean for raising Kanan, characters that they could introduce and some general thoughts and theories around the feel of the show and the storylines we do need to be mindful of for all things Power Origins Season 1. Now let's start right at the top. 50 Cent has no doubt made this happen because he knows what the Power fans want and he's also a very shrewd businessman who will know anything to do with Ghost and Tommy is going to catch our attention. I also think it's important to discuss who the showrunner is for Power Origins, who I'm sure we should all be familiar with at this point, or if you're not, you will be. The executive producer for Origins will be Sasha Penn, and let's not forget, he is the current showrunner for Raising Kanan. Now why I thought it was important to make that point is because of continuity. It is important to have someone who knows the story, someone who's familiar with the Power Universe, and someone who's worked wonders with Raising Kanan because as Power fans, we do want the best possible storyline that matches as close as possible to the little easter eggs we had and saw in Power and also Raising Kanan. For example, we do know there is a young Tommy around the neighbourhood because of this graffiti, but with Sasha Penn and potentially Gary Lennon who's a showrunner of Force, I do think Power Origins is in very good hands. Now having said that, before we move over to what we should expect with Power Origins, I do think one of the questions we have to ask is, how do they finish Raising Kanan? because you do have to assume where they finish Raising Kanan will impact where they could potentially start with Power Origins. I recently created a video where I said it does make sense to finish Raising Kanan by focusing on the Thomas family and just finishing that Thomas family storyline. You know, just flush out the characters of Rock, Marvin, Lou, Unique, Famous and everybody else. Give them the storyline that they deserve in a patient manner without rushing the introduction of Ghost and Tommy and just kind of let Raising Kanan be what it is, Raising Kanan. The story of Kanan growing up and us finding out what happened to the Thomases, what happened to Unique, Famous and so on. And the term I used in my previous breakdown was Gold Dust. They know they were sitting on an absolute gem whenever they decided to introduce this storyline, which didn't have to always be in Raising Kanan. And it seems like they finally made their move, with the announcement not too far off from the 10 year anniversary of Power, which is June the 7th. And on a quick side note, June the 7th is also a Friday, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's when we get Ghost 401. It is also St. Patrick's Day soon, so we may even get a teaser confirming the date, so that's just something to keep in mind. But in terms of raising Kanan, as I mentioned before, it does make sense for them to finish the Thomas family storyline. Does it mean that raising Kanan only has two or three seasons left? Possibly, because I don't think they're gonna kind of drag out the storyline or make raising Kanan stale. I think what makes a show great is, if you have a high quality level of five or six seasons, rather than 10 seasons with the latter seasons kind of just dragging on, which I don't see them doing with raising Kanan, they can end power shows at the end of 5 or 6 seasons and continue with another spin-off again and again because as they say, power never ends. So in my personal opinion, I think maybe right at the end, they may be introducing a young James, a young Tommy and also Breeze because Breeze will be playing a big role in the development of all three of Ghost, Tommy and Kanan. We knew this guy Breeze when we were kids. He came up with Ghost. He said the kid had the ability to disappear. Never saw him coming, you never saw him leave. So these are the small easter eggs I'm sure Sasha Penn and the writers already know about. I'm sure they've done their homework in terms of what was said in Power, the history and some of the storylines. But what's gonna be fun is, watching these moves in the streets for Breeze to give him this nickname of Ghost. We know that Tommy said he had the ability to appear and disappear. You never saw him coming and you never saw him leave. Kanan also told Tariq that nobody could catch Ghost. Poof. One minute you see him, the next minute he was gone. 
So let's see how James navigates the streets for him to earn this elusive nickname of Ghost and whether that's actually a storyline we do see in Power Origins. Now another few questions I'm sure we all have is, how do they start Power Origins? Who will be playing the young Ghost and Tommy? And what age will they be? I think we do have to remember that Jukebox is 18, Kanan is also 17, that means Tommy and Ghost are 12 because they are 5 years younger. I know there is a date of birth floating around of Ghost which shows he is actually older than Kanan but it was later changed in the story of Power. Courtney Kemp and Sasha Penn have also been on record to say Ghost and Tommy are 5 years younger than Kanan. So if they're bringing in Ghost and Tommy, I don't think they'll be introducing them as 12 year olds. We may see a flashback or two like we did with the younger Kanan, but I would assume that the timeline of raising Kanan will move on with Ghost and Tommy being a bit older. So I for one think Power Origins makes sense to start after raising Kanan finishes, rather than kind of running alongside it. And in essence, you could say that raising Kanan has created its own kind of world within its own book. So I think we could potentially see Ghost and Tommy a little older, maybe 15 or 16, which would then bring them closer to that timeline of 1996, which then brings us to this scene. Hey yo, come on, we gotta move this way. Kanan's gonna be looking for us. So he's gonna try to the breeze. Hi, I'm ready. Now of course, these are all just my thoughts and theories. I could definitely be completely wrong, but you guys know I always use a method and a logical based approach based on evidence, facts and findings. But that's what I think makes the most logical sense. Now the actors that we saw in this scene at the end of 615 were Ethan Kukoski as a young Tommy and William Chris Sumter as a young ghost. But will they be the ones playing the young ghost and Tommy in Power Origins? That's the question. Or will they recast them? At this moment in time, we're not too sure. Again, it's way too early to say. But I'm sure there will be some news on casting and character descriptions that will come out at some point in the near future. So that is just something to keep in mind. And with that being said, that brings me on to other characters that they could potentially introduce into Power Origins. I got to know that you understand that I tried to tell them not to talk to the police. That those kids were bad news. The history of Ghost backstory or parents wasn't really spoken about much during Power, apart from a final few episodes. We learned about how his father, Curtis St. Patrick, was killed by some young thugs in the streets, how he used to be in a partnership with Uncle Gabe where they own the jazz club, which might even turn out to be Café Vu that we've seen in Raising Canaan. I like it, she, she, she love it. No hesitation, I had to push up on it. I like it, she, she, she love it. No hesitation, no hesitation. Her breathtaking beauty had me gasping. So just back to the topic of Easter eggs. We know that Tommy and Ghost used to have this rap, and right at the very end of Raising Canaan, imagine we just hear this on stage at Café Vu, these two young kids singing the same song we heard back in power. Whether or not they tease it in Raising Canaan, Hopefully something that they do remember to bring in at some point in Power Origins. But this jazz club is also why Ghost had the vision to open Club Truth, to kind of make it up to his father and make him proud of what he's accomplished. And I'm going to come back around to this storyline in a bit more detail in just a moment. But if you're introducing a young Ghost and Tommy, then you'd have to assume that they'd be introducing Kate to St. Patrick and maybe even a young Kate Egan. Again, let's not forget that Kate was the one who took in Ghost after Curtis died. Could we also get the backstory of Ghost's mother who wasn't really mentioned back in power? Corny Kemp also teased that Ghost doesn't have a sister and a possible hint of him having a brother. So could they explore that storyline and a bit more family? Because when you think about it, what did we even know about Ghost's family? We were never really introduced to that many or even heard of anyone else back in power. So it will be very interesting to see who they kind of cast to kind of supplement a young Ghost and Tommy. You know, depending on how far they take the storyline or depending on which direction they want to take their journey and story. Will they introduce a young Angela who was played by Camilla Perez? Could we see the early rise of crews such as the Soldado Nation, RSKs and maybe even see a young Roller? There's so many characters that they could introduce and storylines that they could tap into, with the main one being Care to St. Patrick and Breeze's death. Now on that particular storyline, I have previously spoken about my particular theory on what I think could have happened. Care to St. Patrick wanted to pull Ghost away from the dangerous street life, but on the other side, there was Kanan and Breeze corrupting his mind, mentoring him and pulling him away because Ghost would have been a very valuable soldier for them. So it wouldn't be beyond reasonable doubt to think Kanan and Breeze got rid of Care to St. Patrick to kind of force Ghost to turn to them and the streets. To further add to this, I also wouldn't be surprised if Kanan then manipulated Ghost into thinking it was a move made solely by Breeze because Ghost then got rid of Breeze and we only have to ask the question, who had the most to gain from Breeze being taken off the chessboard? The answer is Kanan. So this is something I do hope we see kind of play out, as well as a lot more of Kanan, Ghost, Tommy terrorizing the streets together, which we did see glimpses of in power, but instead of them being forced to work together, we could see this brotherhood, what made them close and why they grew so much love for each other, 
No doubt, we're gonna see them fight. We'll find out how Ghost got his scar, which Omari said was for, from an altercation with Tommy. There's gonna be a lot of lies, manipulation and betrayal along the way. And we're definitely gonna see this famous handshake again. So there is a lot to look forward to in terms of the storylines and plots. And that brings me over to Kanan crossing over into Power Origins. At some point in the story of Ghost and Tommy, you do have to think that they are gonna bring in Kanan. Because after all, Kanan was the guy who taught them how to be men. Back in the day, Ghost and I drove a 91 Honda Accord. Back then, Kanan kept us in line. Taught us the business, made us men. Ghost and I owe your father big. This is also why I think Raising Kanan's story will probably finish rather than running alongside Power Origins because they are kind of in the same world. So I reckon we'll eventually see both Kanan and Duke possibly cross over into Origins at some point. Whether that's a couple of episodes in, one season later or two seasons later, who knows. But I do think Kanan will cross over and the Kanan that we see in Origins is going to be very different to the one we were first introduced to. We all know he's turning from a pup to a wolf and he's only going to get worse. So the character that we see in a few seasons time, he is going to be different. He's going to teach Ghost and Tommy how to be men. He's going to show them the chop shop and like Tommy said, there wasn't a good idea that Ghost didn't steal from Kanan. Man, hand to hand cash is the move when you wash your money. We learned that from you and your car wash. You knew that. <laughs> Ghost ain't never had a good idea he didn't steal from you. So again, there is a lot of material that they could tap into from OG Power, and I am sure a lot of it will play a big role in the story of Power Origin. And the same also goes for Jukebox. Ghost, he was your boy, that kid. Always with his head in the motherfucking book. Vicious with a piece, though. So very similar to Kanan, you would assume that Jukebox would cross paths with a young Ghost and Tommy as well. Back in Power, Jukebox made reference to Ghost being book smart, someone who always had his head in his books, but vicious with a piece. Later in season 4, Tommy also called Duke a crazy bitch. And for Tommy to say that about someone, you guys know we're just getting started when it comes to Duke's evolution. Now I'm not sure whether Duke will play a major role. I do think we'll see more of Ghost and Tommy's origin story with them possibly meeting Kanan and then Breeze, but Jukebox will probably be about doing her own thing. So let's see if and how they integrate her into the storyline. Let's see who makes it out of raising Kanan and whether there's any more crossovers. Because as I mentioned before, I do think they're creating their own kind of world that Ghost and Force have. Now just over to some general thoughts and something that I would love to see them implement. And that's either Joseph Sikora or Amari Hardwick narrating Power Origins, just like 50 does with Raising Kanan. I mean, is it a coincidence that Amari Hardwick just reposted something Power related on his story on Insta? And then we get this announcement. You guys know, I don't believe in coincidences in Power. I do think he could potentially be involved in some shape or form, whether that's narrating, producing, helping with the direction of the younger version of his character. I do think Amari could potentially be involved, and the same goes for Joseph Sikora. Now, last but not least, Something else I'm excited to hear is a soundtrack, which I'm sure will have a very similar feel to part of the game. 50 Cent never misses when it comes to producing the right theme song for power shows, apart from the time when he bought the remix in with Brig Rich Town for that one episode, but he never misses when it comes to the power universe and the same goes with these soundtracks. So let's see what he cooks up for Power Origins. I do think it will be kind of something special with a mix of Amari Hardwick and Joseph Sikora, so let's wait and see. But that's a breakdown of everything we know in regards to Power Origins, some clues, details and easter eggs that we need to look out for. So as always, the floor is now yours. Drop all your thoughts, theories and early predictions down below in the comment section and let me know how you see them playing out this storyline with the young Ghost and Tommy. Will we get the introduction to Care to St. Patrick, a young Kay Egan, Uncle Gabe and a few others? Drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.